What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. AAC reload time. We're going to see if this stuff is actually truly reloadable. This is a boxer primed steel case. It's not Verdan prime like the usual Soviet stuff. So this is an American made 762 by 39 ammo steel case from Palmetto State Armory, basically, but it's their AAC ammo line. So we're going to go ahead and take some empty cases that we have that we fired from a previous video. You should definitely watch that video. We tested the crap out of this ammo. And we're going to load up a handful of random projectiles that we pulled while doing some measurements on that ammo during that video. Some of these are Tula, some of these are Wolf, and some of these are AAC. Each one of these are fired cases, so we got to knock that primer out, put a new primer, new powder, and seed a bullet. For today's adventure, we're going to be using a Hornady 2-set die, 762 by 39 of course. And then the shell plate we're going to be using is the number 6. That fits 6 5 grand old 38 special. 357 mag and 762 by 39 maybe others. We're going to be using our very well broken in Hornady Progressive Press. Let's get started by loading up some number 200 CCI large rifle primers. We'll load up seven of those into the tube. Very gently pop that one at the top. Drop those seven down. Yeah, almost. Almost again. So I'm not going to use the Progressive Press to do this all in one complete action. I'm going to run it through a few times each one of these pieces of steel. Otherwise, it becomes a three-ring circus, and we don't want to do that today. So first step is going to be D-prime, resize, and reprime. I'm going to be using the Imperial Sizing Die Wax from Redding. And with this wax, you really don't need to use a whole lot. I'm going to lubricate the first case a little bit extra just to get everything flowing. If it dents it, it dents it. Oh, well. But I want to get some there in the neck. I want to make sure that that mandrel, that's probably a whole bunch in there. But I want to make sure that that mandrel has a fair chance. And I can clean that up in a second. There, I swabbed it out. It's not so severe. So let's get this first one loaded in there, and let's see how this goes. I have to hold the back of my little priming press stick right there, but let's see if that goes in nice and easy. I heard the primer drop. It did take some force, and but it let loose. So let's check the bottom real quick. I did not clean these, so there might be some garbage. There definitely is garbage falling out of them. But it could be a little bit of gunk from sitting around, or it could just be the old fired powder. So that's not exactly a clean operation. You want to definitely tumble these in something, but then remember, you could be removing any last little bit of lacquer that's on them. But the primer is out, so let's go ahead and see if we get another primer seated in there. So that is a large rifle primer, and it appeared to seat. It felt like it did. And we are at a good level on our case. I'm going to go ahead and clean up that sizing wax i'm not going to use alcohol like i typically would because i'd be afraid like i said it might strip everything off that round and then it might actually be you know really easy to rust but primer looks good so that is ready to get powdered up let's go ahead and do that six more times all right seven cases primed ready for new bullets and we are using the cfe blk or cfe black it works really good for 300 blackout, so of course it would do good in 762 by 39 in my opinion. This is a known recipe, but I can't give you the recipe because I can't show you how to completely load ammunition here on YouTube. So you're just going to have to trust me. It's a very common load, but just can't tell you what it is. So we're going to reload these cases with some powder seven times. All right, we have all seven of those filled with that specific quantity. I made sure it was down to the exact measure. All right, we're going to remove our deep priming and resizing die, and we're going to go ahead and set in our bullet seating die that we already have set up for this round of AAC ammo. I use that to set the bullet depth and everything. So let's go ahead and load one of these in there, and let's see how close we got. I'm going to pick out an AAC projectile to start out with. It has that cannular, and hopefully we get somewhere close. Felt a little bit of neck tension going in. I didn't go all the way down because we're already at that cannular center, exactly pretty much where we want to go. So let me fool around with this for one second. I would say that's exactly where we want to be, but I'm going to measure it. So our maximum cartridge overall length is 2.20. We don't want to go any higher than that. So I'm going to bump this down just a little bit more to get more of that cannular involved. And I think that's a good place to go ahead and set it. Now our sample round right out of the box was 2.195. Let's see where we ended up with this one. 
2.192. I would say that that is close enough. We can handle that. 2.193192. So I'll take that. All right, one down. Let's go to the next. So there does seem to be a little bit of a pop here when I go ahead and seat those. But that should have put it right where we wanted it. It's right at the edge of that cannula. We're going to go ahead and zero these out real quick. 2.183. So it seemed to put that one a little bit deeper. So my equipment's just about as good as AEC as, as far as go ahead and set the bullet at the correct depth. And when I moved on over to one of the Tula or Wolf projectiles, I did have to adjust the seating die a little bit because where it goes ahead and pushes down on the bullet in the seating stem, it grabs it in a little bit of a different place so it wasn't seating them as deep. So I did correct for that. And the last one I did is set at 2.20 exactly. I didn't realize it, but I had eight cases I went ahead and filled up with powder, but seven projectiles is what I have. So that's why there's a little bit of a discrepancy, but we now have seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven loaded up. Let's get them outside and see how they perform. And some of you may notice that I did not put a crimp on this. That is correct. It didn't come with a crimp. Wolf, Tula, or AAC, none of them had an actual crimp, not even the AAC that has the cannula for it. So I'm just going to do it as is. It seemed to have enough neck tension. I checked them all. I chamber checked them all. They did go in there just fine. I don't want to mess with anything and try to buckle the cases or anything weird. So we're just going to let it go without the crimp. I'll check a couple after we chamber them just to make sure nothing's affected. Just for fun, we'll check things through the chronograph to see where we're at. But don't put too much thought into that because these are different projectiles with different lengths. Therefore, the projectile seating depth is just a little bit different. I'll start out by shooting the two AAC projectiles first. But after that, it's between Wolf and Tula. I've lost track of which one's which. I actually think that they're the same round bullet projectile whatever we of course have a youtube compliant magazine that couldn't hold anything more than 10 rounds if we tried and the last two will be the aac we're bringing back the good old wasser 10 for this one so pointing into a safe direction just in case anything goes wrong i'm going to let the first one go home and it definitely chambered you can see the bolts all the way closed nothing protruding all right i'm going to take a shot through that chronograph real quick and hopefully not hit anything like the chronograph. That one only went off, that, that only registered 1,009 feet per second. So it did go through there. That could be the sun right now. We'll try it again. Let me make sure that the one that we did chamber, let me make sure the bullet didn't try to fly forward or anything like that. So everything still looks good. We have some cannula that you can see in there still but the bullet didn't fling out. There is enough neck tension, at least in that loading sequence. And that one chambered easily. So hopefully we can do better on the chrono. That one says 2273. And we did load another one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to check that projectile one time. And yep, doesn't seem to have gone anywhere. So I don't know about that first reading. That could have just been the chronograph getting screwy. We're in just the right light where the sunshades might help or they might hurt it. That was 2283. That was 2294. 2202. 2278. And yes, I'm holding this rifle weird just in case anything weird happens. I only have one hand involved up here. 2265. And that must have been it. All right, so they all did cycle through. Let me go find a couple pieces of that brass. And looking at these newly fired primers, nothing looks to me scary at all. Everything looks really good, actually. Good solid hits, and I didn't feel any kind of hang fire or any weirdness. Everything seemed pretty normal. The cases themselves, they look to be in good shape. I don't know how many reloads we're going to get out of them, but we're definitely going to try to test that a little bit.
So I have five of them right here that I picked up, no promises, but hopefully in a future video, we're gonna go ahead and put these through a stress test and see how many firings we do get out of them. So there you go, we did reload it. They're not lying, it is reloadable. So that's actually pretty cool. There's not a whole lot of 7.62 by 39 brass laying around. You usually have to pay a pretty good penny for the loaded ammunition or just for the new Starline brass or even used brass when you find that somewhere. So it's cool to have options. You gotta probably treat this stuff pretty good. Don't let it get wet. I don't know about the long-term preservation situation because usually this kind of ammo does come with some sort of a lacquer or polymer coating on it. And I think that's getting burned off in the firing sequence. I could be wrong. The sizing wax or any kind of lubrication that you're gonna use, maybe you wanna use a dry lube on it. Maybe that might preserve the cases a little bit, at least on the outside. So I don't know who would want to reload it consistently, but if you want to, it's able to be, and that's what this video is for. So we did prove that you can, it's just a matter of, like I said, do you want to? So another good mark for AAC. The AAC ammo is taking a little bit of a hit out there. I have nothing to do with Palmetto State Armory. I just wanted to thoroughly test it. So like I said, that's another good mark for it. We need quality American-made steel case ammunition to replace the Russian stuff that we used to get so cheaply. The next step after getting, the next step after getting it made USA side is to get it made cheaply USA side. If that's going to happen or not, I have no idea, but at least we have it. At least we know it runs. It's somewhat in spec most of the time, and now we know we can reload it. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoy these type of videos. Stay tuned. Subscribe for more stuff with this AAC ammo, 762 by 39 in general. We have the Mutant and the Wasser. We love them both, and we love to shoot them on the channel. Until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting. Maybe 762 by 39 steel case reloads.